Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to another Bowel Blitz and the brilliant episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show that stuffs a grapefruit down its pants to impress the ladies and yet still ends the night all alone with slightly sticky plums. And I actually just realised a couple of days ago, it's been three full years since I started this Techspert channel and made YouTube that little bit sh** uh, unfortunately, uh, while it is some sort of cause for celebration, I can't find my party hat and I've run out of the little party popper things. So here's some repurposed footage from when I hit half a million subs. Suck my chubby! Hey! Now before we actually plunge fitness first into the show proper, full disclosure, I actually had to shoot the show midweek this time around because, and get this, I actually left Techspert Towers this week and enjoyed a civilised afternoon of drinking at a brewery with other people who I knew. Absolutely wild times. And best of all, it was actually a press event so I didn't have to pay for any of the booze that I poured down my throat, which is the whole reason I got into this whole tech journalism shenanigan in the first place. So yeah, apologies, it is a slightly shorter news roundup this week and and if anything wild and crazy happened on Thursday, like Bill Gates went on live TV to announce that all this time he's actually been Cthulhu in disguise, and then all of a sudden all the Windows 10 PCs and laptops around the world exploded in spontaneous flames. Now the whole reason I haven't mentioned it on this show is because I was filling my boots. So anyway, that's enough waffle uh, jingly jingly. Techspert Weekly! So this week's big news was the Google I.O. shenanigans, yet another huge tech event that was reduced to a virtual online streamy thing, which at least means you can watch it in the buff while drinking your favourite single malt and distract yourself during the boring bits by looking up educational content on the internet. We saw a first glimpse of Android 12, which is now available for devs to download in beta form on just a handful of supported phones. This mostly shakes up the theming of Google's OS with the unified material design running through the whole system and eventually stretching to apps as well. As usual, a big talking point was privacy, so you'll be able to see more clearly which apps are spying on your activities and shut those cheeky mofos down in an instant. Google also announced a long overdue shakeup of Wear OS courtesy of a very smart collaboration with Samsung, creator of the brilliant Tizen OS. This promises a best of both worlds affair like a kebab pizza. You got your kebab, you got your pizza, individually pretty good but together mwah, a masterpiece. Apps will allegedly load faster, transitions will be smoother than a buttered up Barry White and this is the big one, Google reckons that battery life will be much improved so your watch won't die faster than a horny teenager in a slasher flick. And also at Google I.O. 2021, uh, well, I, this kind of happened. Hello? I mean, I think it's supposed to have something to do with machine learning, but frankly it just looks like those Google guys have been spending their hard-earned bucks on the wrong kind of brownies. There's, I mean, there's just not enough f***ing whiskey in the world to make this anywhere near alright in my skull. And Google took the opportunity to announce tons of other little updates and improvements as well. So for instance, Maps is going to have more AI built in there as well. So it can show you more relevant stuff based on things like the time of the day, your location and your uh, daily habits. Basically, so in the morning, for instance, I'll show you like cafes and pastry shops. And in the evening, there'll be boozers and nightclubs. For myself, no matter what the time of day, it'll probably just automatically lead me in the direction of the nearest Weatherspoons. There was also lots of security-based shenanigans, just, just so much stuff that I can't even begin to list it all. But if you need to know more, uh, Google's done a very good blog page for its IO 2021 stuff, so go check that out. I'll try and remember to stick a link to it in the description below, but I probably won't, so don't even bother looking, actually. And also this week, the Poco M3 Pro 5G was launched globally. Yippee hooray, another budget 5G phone, offering very similar specs to the Redmi Note 10 5G, including MediaTek's Dimensity 700 chipset. You've got a full HD IPS screen with 90Hz refresh support, a 5000mAh battery and a choice of three colours including a bright yellow one that kind of looks like one of those cartoon minion guys after an unfortunate encounter with a steamroller. Full unboxing and review inevitably coming at your face holes real soon. And that's it for the news, as far as I'm aware at the time that I'm shooting this video. So now it's time for the part of the show, regrettably, that Radio Times hailed as the second worst thing on the internet right after the James Corden official fan page. It's viewer comments. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Viewer comments.
suck my chubby. Now, so first up, David says today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow, chugging JD from the bottle. Good bit of JD action, do love it. Simon says, when is Jack Daniels actually sponsoring? Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, I have fundamentally failed when it comes to the sponsorship opportunities here on Techspert. Now, I get loads of offers every single week. I get offers from VPNs and other stuff like that, you know, tech stuff. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to booze sponsorships, absolutely not even a sniff. What I need is distilleries offering me crates of the good stuff to pimp right here on the channel. You know, and you know I would feature it. You know I'd be sat here drinking whatever it is right now on camera, getting maximum screen time. It is getting to the point where I'm seriously starting to consider setting up booze spurt and just basically spending the rest of my days drinking alcohol and going, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Barry says, I'm currently on a litre bottle of Jim Bean because I'm a cheap twat, but come on, it all achieves the same end. No, very true, Barry. I mean, it all basically ends up splashing the porcelain one way or another, so screw it. Uh, Sheepledog says, the Leaving Las Vegas vibe is an act, I'm hoping, a fantastic film. And yeah, good news, I've calmed down this week quite considerably, uh, mostly because we haven't had two dozen pissing laptops all launching on the same friggin' day. Hooray! Uh, James Smart says, if you're a mentalist, then so am I. It must be our generation of talking bollocks and loving it as life is too serious. Yep, yeah, far too serious. Agreed, sir. Nothing like a hearty dose of bollocks just to make everything that little bit better. Uh, Etienne says, no dig at Corden or Mrs. Brown's boys and only the one your mum joke this week. Christ, it must have been a rough one. Yeah, uh, you knows it. I've actually just had the really horrible thought of James Corden guest star in an episode of Mrs. Brown's Boys as well. Ugh. Like the one way to make that shower shit even more unappetised. It'll be like taking a shit sandwich and then adding a healthy dollop of horse jizz. Now next up, Divas the Wolf says, imagine a Sony press conference and Techspert gets to truly test the waterproofing with a good bit of anime. Uh, yeah, that would, <laughs> that would probably be my last ever Sony press conference. And though having said that, I've been on various press trips in my time as a tech journalist slash YouTube twat. And uh, I've got to say, the most carnage always seems to happen on the Sony efforts, especially where the likes of uh, CES in Las Vegas was involved. I won't go into any details to, uh, <laughs> to avoid naming and shaming and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, some of those got, got pretty full on. Although I'm not talking to the level of like burying hookers in the desert or anything like that. They weren't quite that, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, next, uh, D Dan Unboxers says, Oi Chris, if you like anime that much, I'm surprised you haven't got into the K-pop game yet. Come join and be immersed in the group known as Dreamcatcher. Yeah, I mean, I, w I was subjected to K-pop quite relentlessly during my time in South Korea. It's been about two or three weeks there. Um, back in the day. I gotta admit, my enjoyment of K-pop is directly related to how much hype beer and rice wine I've poured down my throat. Let's look these guys up. Dreamcatcher. Yeah, I mean, it looks like your standard K-pop group. Um, I've never really understood why every single K-pop group has to have at least like a dozen members in it. And clearly it's, you know, I'm not into it at all, so I, I just purely do not understand. But even like back in the day, the likes of S Club 7, that seemed excessive, having seven people to literally just prance about the place and gurn at the camera. Surely all you need there is Rachel. Just scrap the rest of them straight off the bat. Anyway, I can't play any uh, few lovely lot, unfortunately, because of the YouTube copyright laws, but uh, I'll give it a bit of a go, see what they sound like. It's a good bouncy little bop, to be fair. Um, although if anyone's into their metal, then definitely check out the Korean band Monsters Dive. Uh, they've only got a couple of albums out, but a nice, good sort of melodic metal. Anyway, better crack on. Um, Ayush, next. Uh, sorry if I completely mauled the pronunciation of that. Says, watching this guy for anime wallpaper and what's your Instagram, man? Um, I, I honestly couldn't even tell you. I, I am signed up for Instagram. I've literally got one photo on there. I think it was like a Lego event from about five years ago. I'll be honest, it's, it's not for me because like, every time we go on press events and it's, you know, if it's a, a nice location like Qualcomm did one in Hawaii every December, the Snapdragon launch, immediately everyone would just be on the beach taking the selfies with the waves in the background, posting it on Instagram, be the same friggin' photo like 20, 30 times. And let's face it, I ain't got, you know, the long flowing locks, the youthful complexion, any of that stuff. I'm a bald, pale northerner. I know my place. I'm staying well off the instant. If you are interested in the social media side of things, you can occasionally find me on Twitter just swearing about stuff in general. Uh, that's pretty much the, the, the full extent of my social media lifestyle. Uh, next up, Pugwash says, I never understood anime. A friend introduced me and I found the Scouse dubbed vocals inaccessible. Uh, yeah, that would probably be a bit of a struggle. But I mean, the great thing about anime is even if you don't understand the words that are coming out of the characters' mouths, chances are it won't make any difference anyway because the plots are absolutely bonkers batch insane. They're nuttier than Squirrel Nuckin's nutsack. 
Uh, Leonardo says, I, I'm still on the subject of anime, uh, I watched the first three episodes of Steins Gate and I thought it was crap, lol. Yeah, no fair play, certainly not for everyone. Uh, so yeah, the first couple of episodes as well, you're just like, what? The, the entire reaction to everything that's happening is just what? But yeah, I decided to stick with it. I got, I really got into it in the end, but yeah, I'm a man of simple tastes. Those simple tastes being booze and ridiculous sci-fi time travel plots. Uh, next up, uh, G of E says, idea, every week cover one new anime for just one minute or something new or something old. Um, I mean, I, I do kind of get the feeling that I bang on about anime far too much already, certainly in Textbook Weekly. Plus, it also, like, these days, I have so little time to watch anime. It literally takes me, like, a month just to cover a short series, so uh, I'd probably run out of anime pretty quick. But one day, I will start Anime Spurt. It's, it's on the list. It's on the list of shit to do behind just go out to every pub in the UK and do that again. I'll tell you what I have just finished though that I really enjoyed. If you've got Amazon Prime Video, check out Invincible on there. It just looks like your bog standard 90s superhero cartoon. Don't be put off by that at all. I was told just, just watch it, see what you think. And by the end of the first episode, I was like, oh shit, yeah, no, this is <laughs> this is some crazy shit. Definitely a good one, uh, based on some graphic novels which I haven't read yet, but I'm gonna definitely stick those on the list as well. Uh, next up, Yukino says, yes, living the life of a tech reviewer is a damn hard one. Uh, yeah, I get the feeling you might be seeing that in a slightly sarcastic manner. And yeah, hard agree, this isn't a proper job by any stretch of the imagination. I get to bugger about with shiny tech all day long. Uh, I, have, I have done actual careers in the past, six and a half years as a tech support guy, decided that it was not for me at all. Let, let me tell you, those guys do not like it when you crack open some single malt and start swigging that from the bottle at your desk at 2pm. Um, next up, Mr. Nosik. Uh, again, I probably completely f***ed up the pronunciation of that, says, uh, by the way, your Polish is not that bad. Um, yeah, no, that's that's not true. I mean, it took me an entire holiday in Krakow just to learn how to pronounce the beer properly, like Okasim and Jivet. I think Jivet I was calling Zyvek or something like that until the bartender started pissing his pants. And even the name of the, the city, for, for God's sake, I was calling it Krakow for the first couple of days until somebody pointed out that that was wrong. I thought it's still not quite as bad as my pronunciation of Fukuoka in Japan. I still remember when I flew there from uh, South Korea, went up to the airport desk at South Korea, a lady behind the desk asked me where I'm going to, and I just looked her in the eye and said, Fukuoka. And it wasn't until she just started absolutely crying with laughter that I realised that that wasn't quite right. And next up, Dolph Ziggler says that's either the Honor Band 6 or the Honor Band ES on your wrist. Uh, close, actually. It's the uh, Huawei Watch Fit Elegant. Because, after all, I am an elegant sort of chap. And yeah, I've had it on there a good uh, week and a half now. I need to actually do a review of this bloody thing at some point once I <laughs> get a spare moment. Uh, next, Tony Mohammed says, we need to bring back the Where is the Xperia updates. Um, yeah, no, you, know, you know what, Tony, that's a really good shout. Let's start it right now. It's the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III update. And this week's update is no f***ing clue, mate. It's the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III Update. Uh, next up, Edwin says that Zen 4 it looks good. Wish I had the pennies for one to replace my Z5 Compact as it's getting a little bit slow. Uh, yeah, I really like the Zen 4 8. Um, not as anywhere near as compact as the proper Xperia Compacts, unfortunately, and that battery life was a real downer for sure. Uh, but yeah, oh man, that, that Z5 Compact, I absolutely adore it. So mine started getting quite slow quite a, quite a while back as well, which absolutely broke my heart. Uh, only continues, cheers for the video. I had flashbacks to vids from the late 90s. Oh, I do have vague recollections of that. That was, was that the late night channel four on it? Like, like 2 a.m. or something ridiculous. Got vague recollections of it coming on the TV when I was just like splayed out on my bed, unable to move, trying not to focus on the ceiling because it was spinning around too much. I'll tell you what, you really can't beat the random that you would find on channel four and channel five when, when you were half cut back in the day. It's just such inspired scheduling crap like Euro Trash. Really bizarre 1970s Euro porn that was just, it was more like a horror movie than f***ing pornography. Attack of the Maniton Bush from outer space. And next up, Shriaz says, uh, Spurt Buddy, let's do a best whiskey and best beer of all times. Ah, oh, Jesus, that, I mean, that is a tough one. The thing is, certainly when it comes to whiskey, I feel like I've barely even scratched the surface, really. I tend to just buy whatever's on offer in Tesco's as far as the single malts and stuff go. I do occasionally get the little taster bottles and uh, try a few of those as well. Had some really, really nice ones. I think I mentioned it recently, the Orkneys do uh, a good single malt, uh, so definitely check out that. 
Uh, as far as the beer goes, well, it kind of depends what kind of mood you're in uh, for a start, because I am a fan of, you know, the old flat, warm British eels, of course. You know, on a winter's day, a nice stout or a porter or something like that always goes down well. In the summertime, of course, a nice light lager or a pale ale. Here in the UK, I'm a big fan of Brew York. Uh, really like the Siren beers as well. And definitely a big up for the Adams Brewery over in Southwold as well. Many a happy memories of supping there beers and the many pubs around there they start to spread out quite a lot of ghost ship and stuff you can find pretty much everywhere now they've got a really nice distillery there as well do a really nice rum really nice whiskey uh best phone to use when drunk <laughs> well i mean at least pretty much every smartphone these days is like 6.5 to 7 inches so probably quite easy to focus on even when you've had a few you can't really see very well although even with those massive displays actually being able to poke the thing that you're aiming at is definitely a true test of dexterity and exactly how wankered you are i just pretty much give up using the google assistant as well because she barely even understands me when i'm sober uh next comment uh this man is the trio from top gear rolled into one person <laughs> oh Jesus, I mean that is a Resident Evil nightmare right there. I'm not sure which part of me I'd want to punch for the first, probably the Richard Hammond part. Whoop. Anyway, uh, running low on time as usual, so a couple couple final ones. Uh, Jason says, I'm going to keep asking until you answer. TCL 25G review, please, please, please. Yeah, I do still need to do a full review of that, completely forgot, sorry. Um, but long story short, if I don't have time to do a full review, basically I don't quite like it as much as the Poco F3 or the excellent uh, Redmi Note 10 Pro. And if 5G is a priority for you, then definitely get something like the OnePlus Nord or the Pixel 4 a 5G if you can. With the Pixel, you don't get the wireless charging that you do on the ZTE, but the camera is so much better. The performance is, is nice and slick. Of course, you've got the guaranteed updates. And last one for the week, uh, Al Yosa. Uh, not entirely sure if I pronounced that right, but he basically says, says pick me, pick me, pick me. Consider yourself picked, Adiosa, if that is indeed your name. So a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Again, far too many comments to get through, but very much appreciated. They're always great fun to read through. Always puts a smile on Uncle Spurt's face. And please do bang your comments down below and I'll try and smash through as many of those as possible next week, where hopefully I'll actually be shooting it more or less on Friday rather than in the middle of the friggin' week. Having said that, if any more PR companies want to invite me to a brewery so I can get smashed, all day long, then uh, I wouldn't say no to that. And next week, there's a couple of bits going on in the smartphone world. There is a big launch on Wednesday here in the UK. It's a phone that's already launched globally, but it is coming to Blighty at long last. I don't know if I can mention exactly what it is though, because I am embargoed right up the wazoo, so just stay tuned for that. And on Thursday, the uh, full embargo lifts on the ZTE Axon 30 Ultra. Uh, so definitely check back then for more on the game and performance and the camera tech, the stuff that I couldn't mention in the original unboxing. And we should have a couple of other cheeky delights lurking there as well. A bit of Oppo A54 and A74 action. So definitely stay tuned for all of that good stuff. So as usual, have a fan-bloody-tastic weekend, whatever you're up to. Do stay safe if you are hitting the pubs, uh, the discotheques. I guess the discotheques aren't open yet, are they? Unless it's one of the weird sort of COVID-regulated ones. But whatever. Anyway, have yourselves a great one. Uh, please do tune in again next week. And uh, put subscribe to the YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, love you. Bye.